Hi everybody, this is Julissa. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. It is Wednesday, April 12th, 2023. I have to come here and make this video, everybody. I, as you guys know, I do speak about a lot of missing person cases. I'm going to say this, you know, in this life, right, when somebody goes missing, an adult goes missing, goes out of their, um, you know, routine, doesn't call, doesn't do um, they're what they're supposed to do doesn't return calls doesn't come back to their family we're not just gonna sit and pretend you know she's just never coming back or he's never coming back somebody knows something right and we have to be as people looking at it from the other side even, even if you're like a, a known person a family member because i understand as the reason that I say known person is because I know family members will never give up, right? How is how is that possible that one day you have your loved ones and the next day they just disappear out of the blue and you're supposed to just, you know, be okay with it? Not be okay, but like accept it and move on, right? Somebody knows something and it's just so sad. So I pray, you know, for everybody who has loved a, a, a lost who has lost a loved one um, specifically in a missing person case. The fact that one day, you know, you're laughing with that person, um, you know, having, you know, dinner, whatever, right? Whatever it might be, having a conversation the next day, that person is gone. Somebody knows something. And today I'm speaking about Madeline Kingsbury. And I gotta say, you know, when I heard about the, her story, I was like, another person missing, right? I think the beginning of the year has really um, brought out a lot of cases. And as you guys know from what, listening in the podcast or following my channel, that I do try to speak about a lot of cases, but there's so many of them. It is so sad. There's a lot of people who are missing. And sometimes I wish we could just have like, you know, there's so many channels dedicated to news and what's happening in the moment, but every single day there's somebody who goes missing, right? And not just one person, many people go missing. That is the sad truth. And people like that case about Ariel Castro who kept captive these three young girls right in the neighborhood, right? And let me just say something because I know they're doing search effort for uh, Madeline Kingsbury. That's her name, right? If you have a gut feeling about something, say it to somebody. In a missing person case, a gut feeling, a suspicious, should never be taken lightly. Why do we hear all the time when they found the, when they find the person, well, you know, people will be like, well, I kind of thought about it. But then I was like, no, that person always seems so nice. They probably didn't do anything wrong. When you have a gut feeling about a missing person case, it's for you to pay attention. It should never be taken lightly. So what could it be, right? Ariel Castro, in case you guys don't remember that story, um, Amanda Berry, Ariel Castro, Gina, Gina de Jesus, and um, there was a Michelle Nye, I think it was her name. It is her name, I'm sorry. Um, three young girls disappear just walking home from school on their way to work like, like Amanda Berry. And this man um, held them captive for 10 years. And the neighbors, you know, at one point during the search, they probably thought they had a suspicious, a suspicion, but then it followed through. And of course, this is not a blame game, but I'm saying nothing like that. But what could it be if you have a suspicion about a house in the neighborhood, right? If the police is searching and you say, you know, I think, can we shake this house? You never know um, anything. If they get a warrant to search that apartment and nothing is found, I'm so sorry. We're just trying to find this person that are missing and move on, right? Like, I don't understand. It doesn't cost anything. And people suffer every day because a lot of, you know, a lot of things are like, oh, you know, that person always seems so nice. But, I, you know, I, I don't think they'll ever do anything like that. Once again, I say to you guys, people have different life. There's a person that they portray, portray to you, especially we're living in the day of social media. So they, they portray this person to you. 
and they perhaps might be living a completely different life. Ariel Castro helped kidnap um, these three young girls for 10 years, and they were right in the neighborhood where they were missing, okay? And it's so sad. So a, a suspicion, a gut feeling about a missing person's case should never be taken lightly. And you should speak about it. Go out. If you see them searching, go out and say something. Perhaps, you know, the, they can get a warrant and search somebody's home and search a neighborhood, look for cameras, things like that. Let me just read to you guys who I'm speaking about today. This is a missing mom from Minnesota. Her name is Madeline Kingsbury, 26 years old, okay? It says here, nearly 2,000 people have searched this week for a missing woman in Minnesota. They say Madeline Kingsbury, like I said, was 26 um, She's 26 years old, excuse me. Last seen the, uh, the morning of March 31st, which was last Friday, well, two, two weeks ago. And this is here, first responder, volunteers, a member of the fire department has been searching for her. Um, they all gathered together searching for her. Authorities say that they are searching for a video that might show where Kingsbury's band, a 2014 dark blue Chrysler, town and country might have gone. Police say they believe her vehicle may have traveled from Winona to Eastern Fillmore County on the day of her disappearance. They're asking for residents in the area to check their video cameras, doorbell cameras and game, or for any signs of a band passing by. It is so sad, you guys, that we have, you know, this case, in like I said, so many other cases about missing people, uh, missing person cases, is so sad because when you we need to understand that every interaction with, that we have in a service industry is also it can either go a good way or a bad way. And let me just tell you, people these days have no patience at all. I do work in the customer service industry, and people. You mispronounce something, you know, maybe with my accent, you say something, you ask them to repeat something a certain way, they get mad. And you have to understand, even like the attitude um, can trigger somebody because a lot of the people, I'm not trying to bash anybody out there, you need to understand these food delivery people, and I don't know why I'm thinking about food delivery, but it's just that sometimes we think that, oh, it's just the delivery guy. And he dropped off my food, and I didn't like how he put it on outside of my door, so I'm going to give a bad review. They know where you live, and that's something that you have to be aware of. I don't even know if Madeline had food delivered recently, nothing like that. I'm just giving you a heads up, be aware, and because as much as we like convenience, everybody, you need to understand that every interaction these days, people are so quick, you know, you know, if they don't if they don't find you like Googling, but let's just say if you are uh, prone to just order ordering all the time, right? Delivering, the, what are they sending you? The minute that Amazon package gets to my house, I'm not even opening the package yet. They send me an email saying it was delivered. What do you think of our service? Because customer service is always will always be the king these days. It will be, not these days, it will always be keen forever because no business will ever survive without a customer, right? So customer service is air right now. So if you give a bad review, you need to understand that person already knows where you live, okay? And you can, and Uber Eats and, and the other food delivery company, I'm not trying to give advertising or nothing like that, they... It's an instant because what happens? I have ordered Uber Eats when I had the studio, and they immediately they say, how much you want to tip? How was your service? All of that stuff, right? We've all done it many times, right? So any interaction, you need to understand that people these days, because finding a job is so hard, you might you don't even know if that person, that's the only job that they have, right? And, you know, we have to be so careful because if you're giving a negative feedback about whatever, like a food delivery, whatever, this person who you are reporting, okay, already knows where you live. You don't know their state of mind. Um, you don't know what's going on in the, in the personal life. So just be aware of things like that. Um, 
so going back to Madeline, right? And I didn't mean to um, speak so much about that, but God knows why, you know, maybe somebody needs to hear that, that just be aware that as much as we like convenience, people also know where you live. So when you're so quick to give feedback, you need to understand that's just somebody's job. That's somebody's food on the table. That's somebody's job. And what happens with every job, right? You always clock out and go home, right? So just be, be aware of things like that. So um, it says here, continue reading of the disappearance of um, Madeline Kingsbury. It says here, Megan's fear were confirmed later that evening when their mother reached out to Megan with concern that her numerous messages to Kingsbury were unanswered. And the 26-year-old was last seen March 31st when she dropped off her two kids at the age of five and two at the daycare in Winona with their father. Kingsbury, a clinical research coordinator at the Mayo Clinic, went back home about 8.15 a.m., the same time that she sent her final text, but never showed up for work. The children's father, who has not been named, told Caps, he left the home around 10 a.m. and returned later to find the empty. Police found her wallet, cell phone, and ID, as well as her jacket she wore that day inside the house. Based on all of this, we believe that Maddie's disappearance is involuntary, suspicious, and we all concerned for her safety. Yeah, this is so... I I pray for the family. I pray for her kids. You know, those kids one day, mom is here. The next day, you know, where's mommy, you know? And they're young kids too. So this is so sad. It's so suspicious that bag, purse, you know, phone, everything has been left behind. It's almost like if she went back home, it's almost like, it's almost like somebody pick her up, you know. It's, I'm not trying to speculate here, but how can you, you know, how can you not? It says here, let me read to you guys more information. Says here, over the nets, over the course of the last 12 days, my family and I have been so you to admire it. Oh, the husband spoke, okay. Let me give you that because I know it's so quick, you know, we have case after case, right? Anna Walsh, you know, um, what's her name? Jennifer Doulos, which I'm going to make a video about her coming up, right? Jennifer Doulos from Rikina, and then we have um, Shannon Watts uh, from Colorado. So many moms, so many um, so many missing mom cases that at, when they find out when everything comes to the surface, the the father is always responsible. So today, just today, April 12th, the, the husband of uh, Madeline uh, Kingsbury, uh, yeah, Kingsbury, it says here, father of Madeline Kingsbury's children say, said he didn't have anything to do with her disappearance. And he actually gave a statement. So let me read that to you. Over the course of the 12 last days, my family and I has been subject to a myriad of accusations regarding the disappearance of the mother of my children, Mary Kingsbury. During these last 12 days, I have cooperated with law enforcement at every turn, including sitting down for multiple interviews with Winona County law enforcement. I did not have anything to do with Mary's disappearance. I want the mother of my five and two year old to be found and brought home safely. I want that more than anything. Law enforcement advised me on April 2nd that they will not recommend that I attend the press conference or that I assist in searches due to safety concerns. However, my non attendance and silence has been inferred by many to a sign of apathy or worse. That could not be further from the truth. I want Maddie home f and for her to be able to be with our two children. God bless the Kingsbury family and please bring her home safely. Okay. I want to believe that. I want to believe that with all that I can. But how can you not think that he might be... You know, let me go back to the timeline again. How can you not think that he might be involved? Because it says here, um, she dropped off her kids 
Okay, the uh, Mary Kingsbury was last in March 31st, that Friday, when she dropped off her two kids, age five and two, at their daycare in Winona with her father. At the daycare with their father. So does that mean that the father was going to pick them up? Because that even on itself sounds suspicious. Because if he was going to do anything to her, because if he was going to do anything to her, you know, let me get put the kids in a safe space in the daycare. And we, we're going to do, like, he was going to do whatever he needed to do with her. And not only that, that statement that I just read to you guys, I cannot help it, okay? I'm sorry if we're wrong about this, okay? But you cannot help it not think that he's responsible. Because in January, I came here to you guys, and yes, history repeats itself. A lot of these fathers, a lot of these uh, mom killers, they think that they're going to just do something horrible and just go on with life and, and, you know, and move on with life and everything will be happy, Dali. I came here in January and I will never forget speaking about the disappearance of Anna Watch and how in the, the first two videos that I make, you can see that I was feeling sorry for the dad and thinking, you know, that must be so sad, this and the other. And then the slap in the face was seeing that man being arrested and coming out of the police with a smile on his face. What a slap in the face. You know, it's, it really was terrifying to see that, his that smile. You know, I know his, he, he was created by Gabriel. I'm just saying that smile just still terrifies me because I cannot get that out of my head. Mm-hmm. He smiled, he smiled, and then the Google searches that he did. And if you haven't heard that case, you know, it's very graphic, but I'm saying you will understand what I mean if you heard that case before, the case of Anna Walsh. So the reason that I'm thinking that this man, who they don't want to give his information yet, the husband of Maddie, right, um, the, the mom who disappeared from uh, Minnesota, on March 31st, the reason that I'm thinking something is fishy about that statement that he gave is that he says, God bless the Kingsbury family and please bring her home safely. I think there's something wrong with that. As weird as that sound, God bless the Kingsbury family. He's not saying... It's so strange. That statement is so strange. He's not saying, pray. I pray every day. Pray for the family. And you have to be careful what you say these days. But what? hold on. God bless the Kingsbury family and please bring her home f- safely. And I understand when people are brought into a spotlight, they're not public speaker. They might not have the right words. They might get confused, whatever it might be, right? But it's something strange about this. Um, the last days, I have cooperated. He says, my family and I have been subject to a, a, a myriad, I can't even pronounce that, myriad of accusations regarding the disappearance of the mother of my children. It's like he's talking about what's going on with himself. Is screaming Chris Watts to me, okay? It's so weird. It's so weird. It's just this story always repeats itself. It's always the fact. You know, when it comes to moms disappearing, like 99% of the cases are always the dad, right? Um, so it's a little strange that... It says, and then, you know, like a five and two year old, right? You have very young kids that need their mom. You're not talking about a 14 year old who can come home from school and make their own lunch and whatever, right? You're talking about a five year old and a two year old. And he's saying, I did not have anything to do with Maddie's disappearance. I want the mother of my five and two year old to be found and brought home safely. I want that more than anything. 
Law enforcement advised me on April 2nd that they will not recommend that I attend the press conference or assist in any of the searches, searches due to safety concerns. Recommendation is one thing, okay? A recommendation is one thing. At the end of the day, you have the authority to say, you know what? This is a nightmare that we're living. I'm going to show my face. I'm going to tell people. Are we going to be, I mean, we're judging everything. Yes, because you're going to be on the spotlight now. Okay. But we as humans, we can also see, see sincerity. We can see, you know, who you are. And we can also, you know, we can f- we can understand when people not I understand that some people lie and all of that not you know I'm not saying that but for you to not even as assist in the searches that's something that's something that wow that's just I don't know but I don't know what type of advice that was maybe you know to give him the benefit of the doubt perhaps the law enforcement noticed that he is not probably very good with social interaction so he might look guilty from the get-go without even people seeing him he already does he will always look guilty into some until we know what happened because he's the mother he's the father of the kids and he she was probably he was probably the last person she saw a lot you know when she dropped off the kids so yeah he will always be that suspect until we find out what happened to her where she went or what happened and i don't even let's just leave it there you know it's just so sad that this is happening again everybody so prayers for her kids her family who are now being taking care of their kids and hopefully you know and god forgive me that if i'm you know pinpointing the husband immediately but you know i also you know ask for prayers for him because you know that must be so hard to know that you have something to do with it and then you're faking it now or that you had nothing to do with it and people are accusing either way it must be terrifying um so let's pray that god touches him and he will come clean in every way you know whatever it is that he needs to come clean about and let's keep the family of Madeline um, Kingsbury in our prayers today. Thank you, everybody, so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching the channel and listening to the podcast. God bless everybody.